but I have Mondays and Fridays as completely free time. Now that might look like jet skiing or flying helicopter or travel or going to a retreat or I don't know, going to the beach for the day or doing absolutely nothing if I feel like it. This little app called Rescue Time is a free download and this is actually a productivity monitor. Basically you've downloaded on your computer and I think there's a Chrome extension as well. And what Rescue Time does is it tracks what you do all day long on your computer and then at the end of the week, it sends you a productivity report. And it actually tracks it down to the second or down to the minute. And it lets you know how much time you spent on Facebook, how much time you spent in your accounting software, how much time you spent in Google Docs, how much time you spent in your emails. And you can rate what's productive and what's non-productive time. One of the things that I really love about using this app, Rescue Time, is it sends you a little summary every Monday. And it just gives you a little reminder on where your time went during the week. And I find that this is very useful to actually surface things that I'm doing that are not productive or things that I'm doing that I thought only took a little bit of time, but actually took a lot of time. For example, when I first started using this and I used it for about five, six years, I've completely internalized it now. So I don't still use it on a day-to-day -day basis. But when I was using Rescue Time, what I found was, you know, I would imagine that just going into zero and running a report would be good use of my time. Zero is a accounting program super popular in Australia and New Zealand for online accounting, I like QuickBooks or anything else. I would find that I'd go into zero, but what I was actually doing was I would reconcile a couple of things in the bank, cash accounts, I'd look up the different balances. Maybe I'd go and check the balance sheet and see if that was up to date or not. Oh, there'd be one or two line items which weren't named correctly. So I'd go in there and I'd name them nicely. So they were all in alphabetical order. And so it was just automatically eating up my time. And so what Rescue Time is really good for is finding those little time sucks where we think we may only be spending half an hour or an hour a week. But in fact, we are actually spending a lot more time disappearing into different apps. So we have now a way of understanding where our time is actually going, and that is rescue time. So once we've got an idea of like where our time is going, what I like to create is the perfect week. And so for me and my belief is that entrepreneurs should have enough time, particularly if you're the founder of your business, you should have enough idle time to allow spontaneous creativity to flow through. And the challenge of that is if you're also the operational lead of your business and you're actually managing all the operations, you're going to tend to have people hitting you up for things every day of the week, maybe even weekends as well. And so my entrepreneurial week over time got to the point where I decided, okay, if I'm being interrupted all week or I'm being interrupted all day by my team, I'm never actually going to get the time to do my creative spontaneous work. And so what I did was I started bunching all of my week into three days, or at least all of the meetings in my week. And I've got it down to, if I want, in IT Genius, I can just do like two meetings a week. That's pretty much it, which is finance and executive, which is Scott. And I can pretty much leave things to their own devices. I choose to do a little bit in the marketing team. And so there's a little bit of extra time in there as well. But pretty much I've got that reduced right down. A few other businesses that I'm involved in, I've got my mentoring program, which is on track. And I've also got a automotive startup that I'm a part of. And there's Onsite Helper, which I'm also an owner of. And so I've got basically board responsibilities there as well. And so with those, as well as a packed project that we're running with IT Genius, there's five businesses that I'm involved in. So I've had my kind of like workday expand out a little bit, but I've got it all basically squeezed into three days now. These repeating weekly cadences mean that all of my kind of like day-to-day -day operational responsibilities to those different businesses are squeezed into those three days, but I have Mondays and Fridays as completely free time. Now that might look like jet skiing or flying helicopter or travel or going to a retreat or I don't know, going to the beach for the day or doing absolutely nothing if I feel like it, or it might mean I'm sitting at home and I'm inspired to create content for my channel and I've got complete freedom to do that if I want to. What I do is I use this cadence to not necessarily stop myself from working on Monday or Friday, but knowing that I'm the founder of the business and I'm gonna be thinking about the business anyway, no matter what I'm doing, to at least give myself the pleasure and the free time and the free space to allow the spontaneous creativity to come through. 
So I want to present that and invite you to consider the three-day work week if that's something that you think might work for you. It doesn't always work like that. Sometimes meetings come up. Like if I show you the, the reality of my calendar, for the most part, things are condensed down into those three days. Um, you can see this big one here is actually an out of office. So that's like a, a day that's completely blanked out. Friday, there's a day that's completely blanked out. Monday, there's a day that's completely blanked out. Sometimes it's during the middle of the week that I'll have a day blanked out and then I'll just kind of move things around that as well. But all of my kind of ongoing scheduled meetings sit on the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then they're all able to be condensed down to the one spot. So if that works for you, fantastic. I want to invite you to have a crack at that. The next one I want to recommend is if you're a manager or you're in a leadership position in a business, if you're not the founder and it's not really your job to be kicking around at home doing nothing and coming up with creative strategies for the business, if it's your job to be managing the operations of a business, then you can still create a perfect week. And this is Scott's perfect week. He likes working five days a week because his job is basically to help solve problems and improve productivity across the business five days a week. And he loves it. He does his 40 hours a week and that works great for him. For me, I'm kind of always on holiday and never on holiday. And so we work very differently. But if you're someone who's more in an operations focused role and you enjoy having good boundaries around your time, meaning you're not going to do spontaneous work on a weekend, but you do still want to work during the week, you can still plan out your week. And you can see here that Scott's done the same thing. Mornings, 8.30 till 10 a.m., high value tasks. So basically it's blocked out and the team can't put anything on his calendar unless it's something that is really pressing to get done strategically. And you can see here also really importantly for Scott, family time, 4 p.m. And that's a hard finish for him. And so no meetings go past 4 p.m. for Scott. He wants to make sure that he's with his family and spending time with them every afternoon, which ends up working great for him. So creating the perfect week for you, pretty straightforward in Google Calendar. A couple of cool features that they've created recently, which make this a little bit easier. So when you drag and drop on a meeting, I'm sure you would have seen that there's the out of office option there now, which will automatically decline any meetings that anyone sends you and kind of like basically block out time on your calendar that no one can add anything. But there's also something pretty cool called focus time. And what focus time does is it lets people know that you're working on a particular task, but it doesn't stop them from putting bookings onto your calendar. Now it's up to you whether or not you literally wanna be free or busy when you block out this particular time on your routine. But if you're creating a perfect week, you might wanna make use of the focus time schedule so you can let your team know hey, 8 a.m. till 10 a.m. weekdays that you want to have your high value task time, you could use that feature to put it in there as a repeating task. My recommendation is that you use any time tracking tool as an opportunity to empower and engage rather than an opportunity to control. And that goes for all of the systemization efforts across the business. When we start doing things like documenting systems, some staff might start to think, am I being fired? Is my role being outsourced to the Philippines? Am I gonna get cut? And so it's important to frame up to your team, okay, we're gonna be systemizing the business so we can create a business that works really well for all of us. And so that if you wanna be able to take a holiday, an extended holiday, you don't have to still be connected to your email or still be connected to work chat or be worrying about what's going on in the business because your colleagues will know how to do your role if it's needed, or at least know how to get enough done in your role so the business doesn't completely fall over. The other thing is with your team, when you're, let's say for example, recommending everyone implement something like rescue time, particularly with the reality of remote work right now, the team might be feeling like, you are questioning their work or you're questioning their performance in some way. And so it's really important to set the frame with your team and say, hey guys, we are working on a productivity initiative which the whole team are gonna be involved in. And this is going to help us create a business that works better for everyone here. This is gonna help you go home at the end of the day feeling like you've got more of your tasks done and feeling a little bit less stressed. So this is good for everyone. It's not about control. And if you make it voluntary for the team, or you don't have to necessarily have their reports automatically sent to you or anything, you kind of leave it up to them. That's the ideal way to bring this up and kind of do this with your team. So it can be a team initiative. And then what you might want to do is if you've got a weekly team meeting, in the weekly team meeting, you might have a little section in the meeting where you say, okay, what's your productivity learning of the week? What did you learn from your rescue time this week? And maybe each person has an opportunity to go around the room and say, hey, well, this week I learned that I was spending a hell of a lot of time in my emails and I'd really like to get more efficient with my emails. Or too many of your customer emails are going to different people's individual mailboxes and you could instead roll out something like Hiver, which is a shared mailbox tool that we sell, which lets you have shared labels. 
and lets you set up like what we have, a help desk, like help at itgenius.com has 30 or 40 people that access that mailbox and access everybody's help requests that go into that. So you might set up something like that in your business. So the idea of all of this is to surface ways that your team might be able to improve the way that they are working. And so if you frame it that way with your team, they're more likely to come on board and that's the best way to roll it out. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your Workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.